Welcome back. We are just continuing our way down problem 35A. We completed part A. That was a journey. Parts B and C are going to be relatively quick and part D will take a little bit longer. It's preparing a financial statement, but I think we could do them all in this one video. So the next question was overhead over applied or under applied for the period by how much? I had mentioned and I, I referred to this in the last uh, video. I said, oh, in part I, we're applying overhead. And so that's what we did. We credited MOH to apply overhead. So let's make a little T account for MOH. And I think it's going to help solve this puzzle. So there's our overhead. And we know we have $75,000 in applied overhead, right? We credited MOH 75,000. Our debits are the actual MOH costs we incurred during the year. Uh, so we had 4,500 uh, here. Let me just highlight these. 4,500 there, 40,000 there, 7,200 there, 17,500 there, 13,500 there, and then we have the credit of 75, which we've already dealt with. So let's, uh, let's fill in the rest of this T chart with the, the other debits. So 4,500. Forty thousand, seventy-two hundred, seventeen thousand five hundred, thirteen thousand five hundred, and a big old credit of seventy-five thousand. And there's no other MOHs involved. So remembering the left side is what we actually spent on MOH. The right side is what we applied and our actual, let's just total up our actual, you wouldn't do this in a normal T account, but it's nice to kind of have the number. So our total debits here plus 40 plus 7,200 plus 17,000, oops, uh, 500 plus 13,500. I get 82,700 as my actual overhead. My applied overhead is 75 thousand. So if I take one side minus the other, you know, the big side gets the balance. 82 minus 75, it's $7,700. Now my question, that doesn't answer the question. I'm $7,700 off. Am I over applied or under applied? Well, ideally I would apply exactly the same amount. There'd be exactly the same credits as debits, but I missed. Now was my miss too high or too low? right? And the answer is I missed too low. I under budgeted. I under guessed. My guess was 75,000. It should have been 82,000. I guessed too low. I under applied my over it. So we are $7,700 under applied. So that answers part B. Oops, scrolling the wrong direction here. Part B says was over at over applied or under applied by how much? You just do a T account for it. And we determined that it was under applied. Part C, record a journal entry to close overhead to cost of goods sold. So remember what's happened here. We've done all these journal entries and we've said, okay, uh, part of the journal entry was to say that the overhead was responsible for $75,000 of the cost. And look, we, we sold a bunch of items and that went into WIP. The WIP went to finished goods. The finished goods got sold and became cost of goods sold. And we're saying now, Oh no, I just realized I underestimated my overhead. I really, this number, if I could go back and do it all over again, this would have been 82,000. I messed up. When I fix it, I don't fix it here. I don't fix the whip because the whip's already been sold. So we got to fix this. We got to fix our cost of goods sold. Our cost of goods sold is $7,700 too low because we underestimated by $7,700. So how do I fix it? I want to make MOH zero. So I want to close the MOH account to pretend like I never missed anything. So I'm going to credit overhead. So this is journal entry. I'll make it secret journal entry L. <laughs> it's part C, part C of the question. I'm going to credit overhead because I want to make this go to zero. So this was sitting at 7,700 debit to make it go to zero. Make it as if I did a perfect guess. Uh, I credit at 7,700. That makes it go to zero. And I debit cost of goods sold 7700 because my cost of goods sold would have been off because I made this mistake here it shouldn't have been 75 grand had I known everything perfectly again we'd never have perfect information we're always going to be off in real life and in these questions we were off 
and now we're fixing that we're off and we fix it through cost of goods sold. Other textbooks I've seen will adjust uh, this over or under applied overhead through different accounts. Most commonly though, you see it adjusted through cost of goods sold. Sometimes they adjust WIP, sometimes they adjust finished goods. I think adjusting cost of goods sold is totally appropriate and uh, you see it a lot in textbooks as well. Okay, so we have done part C. We had over applied overhead in part B. We did a journal entry to close overhead to cost of goods sold in part C. Now D. Based on the information above, give me an income statement. Okay, an income statement is the summary of revenues and expenses. Let's give them an income statement. Uh, we need a three-line title. I forgot the name of our company. Intercity Roofing. So let's start there. Income statement. Now they haven't given us any dates in this question. So I'm just gonna say for the year ended December 31st. And then you can write whatever year it is when you're watching this. Uh, for the year ended December 31st, that's good enough too. So remember what an income statement looks like. Top line is our revenue. And we had one revenue in this company. We had sales revenue. And just scrolling up, I can see the sales revenue happens right here. It was $800,000. We made $800,000 worth of sales. That's what's shown in our entries. Now, knowing how a merchandise, somebody that sells inventory, their income statement is always going to look the same at the top. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Sales minus COGS is gross profit. So let's deduct our COGS. What are our COGS? Our COGS, we initially thought they were 350 grand, but we just adjusted that by 7,700. So we had a debit in COGS. We have another debit in COGS. We add them together. We, we had underestimated our COGS at 350. Had we had by the way had we had over applied overhead we'd have to everything would go in the opposite direction right we would have to debit moh credit cogs and we would have had previously overestimated cogs anyway I, maybe i'm over talking this one you can do more examples and you'll see uh how that's adjusted but had i gone the other way had i over applied it's just the opposite journal entry that fixes it in any event we have two debits and COGS, so our total COGS, you just add the two debits together, 357, 700. Again, if one was a debit and one was a credit, we take the debit minus the credit. But in this case, we don't need to worry about that. 357, 700. Sales minus COGS is gross profit, also called gross margin. 800,000 minus 357, 700. 442,300. Now we list our expenses, our selling and admin expenses. In a previous life, we might've called this operating expenses. That's totally fine too. The only thing we would keep in mind is with operating expenses, interest isn't included here and uh, income tax is always an expense that gets its own special treatment. There's no interest in this question, but let's go through everywhere we see the word expense, exp and I'll highlight it in nice, beautiful, pinky, purple color. Uh, so we're looking for expenses. We got admin salaries expense. We got sales salaries expense. We got sales commissions expense. Hopefully that looks good on your screens. Uh, advertising expense, it looks kind of on my screen. Rent expense, depreciation expense, it looks okay. Insurance expense, and I think that's, that's all we got. So I'm just gonna list all those expenses. Start with a min salaries expense and work my way down. A min salaries expense was 190. Those administrators always pay themselves a lot. Admin salaries expense 190. I always list when I have list of expense. I list on the left. I total on the right. Sales salaries expense 30. Sales commissions expense, 90.
advertising expense, five. Uh, rent expense, 4,800. Uh, depreciation expense, 7,500. I missed the number. I got distracted. 7,500 and insurance expense was 1,500, I believe. So I total those up. 190 plus 30 plus 90 plus 5 plus 4,800. I'm going to put in as 4.8 because I'm using in thousands. Plus 7.5 plus 1.5. I get 328.8, 328,800 for my total. Selling and admin expenses all right we're almost home we're almost home uh we're, we're gonna need another subtotal we take our gross profit we deduct our selling and admin expenses 442 300 minus 328 800 and we get 113 500 this would be either our operating income or if we if we know all we have is taxes left and that's all we've got uh it's income before taxes now we'll generally have income taxes i might not have mentioned these already but here we go it says based on the information about preparing income statement for the company assume a 20 percent tax rate that's 20 percent of income before tax so I just take that income before tax number, 113.5. Over here, I multiply by 20%. This isn't actually on the income statement. I'm just doing it on the side of the page. 113.5 times 0.2 is $22,700. That's my income tax expense. $22,700. 1135 minus 22700 gives me $90,800. That is my net income. Now, just to make this proper, we have a nice looking title. We need dollar signs where they belong. Top of each column, there's two columns. The one where we listed the numbers is a different column, but we don't need one here. We don't need one here because there's already one at the top of this column. So those two places and then anything double underlined gets a dollar sign. At that point, I think we've got ourselves a beautiful income statement. And I think we've quite finished a very long question, which is a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Thanks again for hanging in there. And uh, don't be shy. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.